we are all we're dealing with a world that is called international. And we hear words like internationalization, oh, that's a good one, uh, globalization, uh, interdependence. And my problem for a long time has been this. At the beginning of the Chartres de Parma, the Charter House of Parma, Stendhal's novel, we have the hero, uh, Del Dongo, Fabrice Del Dongo, and he's in the middle of the battlefield at Waterloo. And, uh, oh my goodness, uh, smoke and fog of war, the bullets are flying, Napoleon is charging back and forth on his horse, and Del Dongo looks at this and he thinks to himself, you know, something very important is happening here. I wish I knew what it was. <laughs> That's it, interdependence, there I am. <laughs> so what I thought I'd try to work through uh, in the next uh, a few minutes, not about 50 minutes or so, is uh, how, what does it mean practically? What does this mean practically for, I'm afraid, lawyers and judges, but lawyers and judges affect others too. So it's people in a lot of professional disciplines. And I want to say we all know this, that there are two tendencies at work and they're considered great forces in the world, that's fair enough. You have on the one hand, uh, the forces of internationalism, interdependence, globalism, those words that are so big in general. And then on the other hand, we have the local, the regional, tribal even. And very often when we read in the newspapers, or I do and you do, uh, they look as if they're clashing, they're at work. There are these two forces at work. And uh, Brexit, you know, Brexit doesn't happen every day. But there are a lot of things that happen that make us think that they are forces that are at least in tension, if not in actual conflict. So I want to say, for some of us professionals, at least most of the time, forget the conflict. Don't look at it that way. We live in a world where those are givens. They aren't necessarily in conflict. For our ordinary work, we have to deal with both, and we do. And we don't even consider them necessarily in conflict. We simply have a challenge which is, which is shaped by those two forces, and we deal with that challenge. Now, uh, what am I talking about? I, usually I, leave, I ask that first so my audience won't all ask it. That's, uh, um, I'm a local judge. I am a local judge. I am not an international judge. I deal with this document, this is the Constitution of the United States. We deal with an American Constitution, we deal with American statutes, American administrative action, but what I find more and more is to do my job, to do this American job with American documents, with American laws, I have to look beyond our shores. And that's really what I want to show you. Law, after all, is not a science. It's at least in part a humane discipline. It isn't architecture, it isn't jazz, but like them, it does embody an ancient universal human need expressed in the book of Deuteronomy, a good day to recall that. Justice, justice shall you pursue. Law helps to organize the lives of human beings in communities in ways that allow them to obtain the benefits of living together productively and in peace. So it isn't surprising that law too faces factual circumstances of the kind that other disciplines, architecture, say maybe jazz, economics, environmental science, lots of other things also face. A world in which the international evermore affects our daily lives. Now here you've always had that for many, many years. America hasn't, not to the same degree, not to the same degree. And where we, the local lawyers, the local judges, have to take increased account of what goes on beyond our shores. How can we, should we, like other professionals, take account of globalization while at the same time maintaining the importance of local ties? Now my experience has been the number of cases in our court, we hear about 80 each year, the number of cases where you have to face that question has grown dramatically since I was appointed to the court about 20 years ago, a little more. Maybe then, you know, I went to Europe and went to a conference and came back and I said, I learned so much there, really useful. And uh, uh, so actually, it was a, a professor from Finland who was at NYU for the year. He said, name one. Yeah. 
Okay, <laughs> I found one. <laughs> but, but, that would be no problem at all now. Maybe 5% of our cases used to call for that kind of thing. Look out beyond America. Now maybe it's 20, 25%. 15, but 20, certainly. 25. And uh, that is a big change. And what they do is they say, look, look out beyond in different ways. And I'm not talking just about treaties. I mean, of course, treaties do. But things that aren't treaties at all. The interpretation of our own domestic constitution, our own statutes, our own laws. And uh, when I speak to an American audience about this, I'm absolutely certain to get this, some form of this. But this is an American constitution, isn't it? This is an American constitution. Why are you looking elsewhere? And I say, well, I, my opinion, and I need, a, I need what I have here, 40 minutes or 30 minutes more, <laughs> uh, to convince you that the best way to preserve our American values is to look beyond our shores.